Uh, I'm Sean Galligan. I head up uh, sales for uh, Flurry, uh, specifically advertising, publishing, and our programmatic business. Uh, super excited to be here tonight and, and happy that you guys have joined us. Uh, thank you, Scott, for kicking off uh, <laughs> this in a very unique way. Uh, also very excited about joining up. Uh, looking forward to the discussion. All right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, my name is Martin Price. I head up mobile products OpenX. Um, so those of you who may not know OpenX, OpenX is a leading ad tech provider. We are an ad server business as well as one of the largest exchanges in the world. Um, on mobile, we have some great SDKs that we've kind of redeveloped from the ground up over the past couple of years, and we just re recently released a bunch of video functionality across our entire stack, um, as well as we have um, one of the largest native exchanges which we launched at Mobile World Congress this year. Um, and as an ex Yahoo of eight years, uh, <laughs> congrats to all the folks who are here from Flowery. Um, I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. Great. Uh, I'm David Kurtz. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Ad Colony. Uh, we're a mobile video ad network. Uh, our special, we specialize in instant play video. So we have a technology that removes latency from video and mobile. Um, and congratulations to the Flurry guys as well. But uh, to the room, I would say that we're not so frightening that you need to have like two rows of buffer crossing <laughs> you. So feel free to, if you're standing to fill in because this is a little scary for me. <laughs> uh, I'm Austin Ewan. I had uh, I'm the director of UA and monetization at Sea Games. We make uh, Racing Rivals, which is the uh, the top <laughs> racing game in iOS and Android. Awesome. So. Let's dive right into it here. Uh, if you're an indie app developer, you've just put out your first game, and now you're thinking about making money, um, what are some of the benefits and drawbacks of using video advertising? I know you guys can probably all speak to the benefits, so why don't we start with the drawbacks? So, uh, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, well, I, I don't know if I would necessarily well, call, it a, call it a drawback. I think you have to use it carefully, okay? I mean, I think the one thing that you have to understand about video, or I think everyone natively understands about video, is it's going to take up some portion of the user's time, right? Videos are typically going to be 15 seconds on mobile. That's fairly common. Uh, you know, some of them can be 30 seconds, especially more on the brand side. And so how you use it, where you place it, you have to, I think, take more care than maybe you would with banner ads. Um, I don't see that necessarily as a drawback per se, but I think it's something you need to be mindful of because you want to be respectful of the user's time and experience. Um, for us, the, the main drawback is just time, right? Like sometimes you actually just waste it um, integrating some bad SDK. Uh, and then they'll always try to sell you like, hey man, it's two lines of code. Um, but that's never the case, right? Um, and and also, like, I, I guess there's no standard across the board that I can look at and say, oh yeah, well, Ad Colony is going to give me an average range of this, or you know, Flurry is going to give me an average range of that. I mean, we've integrated SDKs where they promise us eight, um, roughly eight dollars eCPM. It takes us two weeks to put it into a sprint, another week for QA. You know, and then uh, Apple takes another week, and then we release it into the wild for another month, just to see them, you know, perform at two dollars. And then it takes us another two weeks to rip it out. So that's just some of the drawbacks. But in terms of like uh, bringing in ad revenue, I mean, there's no real drawbacks there, except that you have to be careful about, you know, making sure like we do incentivized, and then so you just don't reward the users with too much good stuff, or else they'll never do um, in-app purchases. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the Venture Beat survey uh, from maybe April, a couple months ago. Um, they basically outlined all the different monetization strategies out there. Uh, ones were, uh, ones what, that were most effective from a monetization perspective and ones that were least annoying. Uh, and certainly video scored very highly uh, in the most effective and also was found to be the least annoying for consumers. So. If you think about it that way, I don't necessarily look at it as a drawback. I just think of it as, as long as it's something that's been integrated thoughtfully into the app experience, you can make sure that you're maximizing your monetization and uh, you're not only uh, not annoying your users, but you're hopefully thinking about driving up engagement because you've built a great experience that integrates with your app. Just add on um, to that a little on the user experience side. So we, we see a lot of people who build their apps, obviously taking a lot of care and 
uh, time to build a really nice app experience and then they're looking for monetization and high value monetization so they're looking to put in kind of quite intrusive video advertisements so like an interstitial for example if you don't have a sample like a, a jumping off point or a point where there's a natural break in the flow of the app and you put in that interstitial there you do have potential negative impact so I think the, the fourth fully is a really good point right where you trigger that how you trigger that how you control that making sure those controls are, are visible really important I think also the ways folks are introducing native video. So, so we got some functionality. I know other folks on the panel have some functionality to put the videos into the feed, right? Similar to we've seen Facebook do, and I think that can be a better experience, provided it's controlled, it's not using up your data plan, um, and it displays really nicely in line. Um, I think those kind of experiences you'll see more of the less intrusive, but give good reach and exposure to the advertiser. So we touched on where it sort of fits in the the actual screen or in the process of an application, does video impact the performance of an app? Does it slow it down and what tips do you have for developers to kind of accommodate for those issues? Do you have anything? I mean, you're as a developer, as the rep? No, no, I mean, um, I think most people are starting to pre-cache. Mm. So uh, as an experience for the users, as soon as they click on it, it's pretty much ready. So. Um, <coughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think the short answer is it shouldn't, but I think to the point you made earlier, sometimes people's SDKs or sometimes people's integrations are not, a, not as advertised. Right, so, for sure. truthfully, I don't think video done well should impact the app at all. Um, to the point you were making about, about you know, pre-caching video, um, which is kind of the, the, the nature of what we do, I, I do think that is something worth being very careful about, right? I mean, you want to be respectful of your user's time, and, and let's be honest, as developers, you're interested in the monetization, I know, but you really want to get users back to your app, get them using your app again, right? And if someone is like being presented with a video ad, um, whether they chose to trigger it or whether it, it showed up at a natural break, and they're waiting for it to load, um, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose their attention. You're going to lose their favor. So it, I think it is important to look at video products that are going to eliminate that type of uh, that latency and eliminate that behavior, because it can be a really damaging impact to your damaging to your user experience and, and uh, cause users to, to to leave the app. Anything else? Uh, I think similar. Just. You know, think about the the perform. You know, the performance alongside the user experience. That for me, they're really linked. Yeah. Um, so, video is it the end all be all? Is there are there certain age groups, certain app types, certain demographics that respond better to video, and how does that fit in? You know, depending on the kind of app you have, is there a time when video isn't appropriate? So the short answer that I think is yes. Um, I, so w one of the ways that we sort of divvy up the way we think about the market is there's, we, we, we think about the market as, as state of want apps and state of need apps, right? So a state of need app is if you're in an experience, if you're doing something where you need something, right? Like Yelp is a great experience, right? I'm looking for a restaurant. If you put 15 seconds of a video ad between someone asking for a restaurant and showing them the results, that's kind of disrespectful of their time right? They need something. That's not a good place for video. Video is not going to be effective there. Uh, apps, want state apps where users there kind of by choice, they're spending some of their, their, their leisure time there. Those are very good places for video. And one of the things that's very interesting, I think, about mobile is a lot of people look at mobile and they think about it as, as like analogous to online. And I actually think that's the wrong analogy. I think mobile is much more like television. Right? It's got session times that rival television, a lot of apps do. And the, so you've got time, when you've got 23 minutes of session time going on on a mobile, on a mobile app, you've got room to put in a few commercials, right? The, the balance of time is right. So I think you do just have to look for, the app has to be a place where if the user is going to give up 15 seconds or 30 seconds to video, they have to be in the app long enough for that to be warranted. That, that's how I would answer that. Yeah, I'd agree. There's, there's certain games or genres that, that perform really well, right? So hardcore game is going to perform better than midcore and, and casual. But to me, as you look across the broad spectrum of, of genres, it's more about the experience and the way it's being leveraged within, within the app. And approaching it like TV, treating it like a commercial break where there's a natural uh, interruption is the most effective way to engage with the consumer. Uh, it's the most effective way to get their attention but also transition them back into the content experience that they're really there to enjoy. 
so to me, it's more about how it's been integrated and uh, and how it's being sort of featured in the experience. Austin, have you had any example of apps where it hasn't been as effective that you can share with us? Um, all of our all of our videos are only they're rewarded, right? So the user actually wants to do this rather than we're just throwing it in their face. Um, so so we do like a, a three different touch points. One of them is just hey. Click on this if you want to earn some uh, premium currency, and the other one is to reduce wait times. So we, when you know, when you're fixing up a car, you want to add X part. It'll take you 30 minutes to install. You click on the video. It says, "Hey, you can watch this 15-second video," and then remove this. And then so they're like, "Oh, cool! Now I can go back to racing." What I really want to do, they click on it, watch the 15-second video, and then uh, the 30 seconds is done. So um, the 30 minutes is done. So uh, we really like incentivized videos. Uh, because I feel that that's where the users are going to have the better experience. Your point. I have to say, by the way, C Games did a really great job of this too, and 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 I think they're a really good example to follow because a lot of the video that you guys have done is actually, it's it's basically native for games, right? It's integrated with the game experience. You've got a racing game, a game that's all about cars, and they created a drive-in movie theater, right? And at certain times of the day, which as a user you kind of wait for, right? there's a movie showing and you can go and you can get some premium currency. And I think coming up with creative ways like that to actually make it part of the experience goes a long way towards creating a positive feeling about the video ad experience for the users, which I think leads to better performance. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt that we came out of a studio, like an advertising studio, and then so we know how to integrate that kind of stuff just natively, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> Yeah, just one thing I'd add is I think from a lot of app developers, if you think and you look at the kind of common practices in app development, you've got your slide menu coming in from the left, you've generally got a feed or a stream of content. I think that is probably kind of one of the most natural places to intersperse um, th those type of short kind of interesting spots and interesting creatives, and I think that 15 second would even drop down. Right? I, I think that's going to get down to probably your Vine six second length or less right? as you're browsing it as a, as a format. And if you don't have video content in your app, right? if you do, there's a whole bunch of tools like most of us will provide, like we do for a player, if you just want to put content in. Obviously, that will perform well. But I think if you've got that kind of holistic, kind of either vertical, usually a kind of a, a vertical scroll experience, that's a really interesting point um, to go put those um, places of content um, pieces of advertising content in and get them in as targeted a way for that audience. The more people also you have looking to buy that and have that in as m connected with as many sources as possible on the advertiser side means you should be able to read the right, the, uh, the right audience to your point earlier. If you've got a specific niche audience, that's going to be really interesting for someone. You've got to find that someone and um, a few of us can help do that. <laughs> so we've talked about where, they, oh sure, go ahead. Curious, what's your response to brand advertisers who may not want to be associated with uh, an incentivized video view? Sure, so the question was, what is our response to a brand advertiser that doesn't want to be associated with incentivized ads? Certainly it's an, it's an option, right? So we've got non-rewarded and rewarded uh, experiences, but we, we do try and show them the benefits of uh, the fact that if they're trying to drive some action after that that video completion, whether it be an app install, whether it be you know uh, traffic acquisition for a mobile website, uh, that's not a rewarded action, right? The reward that they're getting that user engaged with the content is happening in completing that video. But there's another step in the funnel that they're trying to get that consumer to complete. Uh, and so for a lot of folks, they may come in with that sort of perception that rewards aren't for them. But once they realize in this video experience that the funnel action that they're really trying to drive towards is not rewarded at all, and actually the user ends up having a very positive experience, and the advertising ends up being very effective and efficient, we typically get a lot of, this, uh, a lot of folks past that pretty quickly. But there's always an option for non-reward. As you can see, the only thing is at the end of the day, you know, think about TV advertising, right? I mean, it's in many ways rewarded video as well. You have to finish these commercials to get to the rest of your show. <laughs> Truthfully, all advertising is a value exchange. You exchange some of your time or your attention for uh, lower cost content. I mean, that's what advertising is. So the truth of the matter is, is first thing we do is don't call it incentivized, by the way. That helps. But at the end of the day, um, you know, really, you can begin to talk to advertisers about the fact that it creates a positive sentiment because the users get to choose when they're going to be exposed to these commercials. And, and I think consumers prefer that experience. There was a study recently, I forget who did it, that actually showed that. 
Um, so we talked about video as a monetization strategy. You've talked about where it fits in the app's experience, where it fits on the screen, et cetera. What about for a user acquisition strategy? How can a developer approach using video ads across other apps, across the, you know, websites? Where does video fit in in that equation? I think an interesting point to start there is, um, you know, if you think about advertising today, how it's moved away from the banner to things like native, and you look at kind of the rise of video, um, and you look at where kind of the blinking's going and where the OS, the, the two new um, OS versions we, uh, we're working on now and, and working to support, I think what you'll see is just content being distributed, right? Like what you'll see, every time you update your app or you release new content or you have new content you want to promote, in theory that can be, you know, either programmatically or manually, you know, put into a, a series of messages that can be syndicated across all the devices that you use. And that's particularly powerful um, tools for you guys to, to kind of benefit and, and sit on top of. I think the where where we are today is you know it's still very early on. Even though we always talk about the year of mobile, <laughs> all these things, you know, we're a few years deep. But if you if you look now at what's going to be um, the ability you're going to have to just cross promote and reactivate users who've installed your app and stopped using them, and you've got new content you want to promote, I would just see video as a really immersive way and a really interesting way to get people into the content in your app. And uh, it's a combination of all the things we talked about: video incentivized video, but really it's just driving active usage into your apps. Um, and there'll be a ton of interesting ways to, to kind of buy and, and, and do that. Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, video takes up 90% of our UA spend. You know, between Flurry and Ad Colony, um, y'all get the lion's share of ours. Because, I mean, video is every, people who are watching it have, you have their captive audience for 15 to 30 seconds. And I, I feel our video is very strong. I think it has the highest click-through rates and, um, e eventual conversions, so I mean, it's really, really good for us. I mean, for us, you know, banners and interstitials, we're <laughs> far less likely to test out a new channel versus somebody who says that they can deliver on video. And then it's like, oh, here, you know, Beca because it's just so good for us. What kind of thinking do you guys put behind a user acquisition video? You know, if you're a dev shop that's putting out a couple of apps, what um, goes what into that? Uh, what, what do you put in a 15 second video for your apps? Um, I mean, we, we try to focus on our features and what's a differenti differentiating factor. I mean, for us racing rivals, it's, it's live um, PVP. It's, um, it's also like there's real life betting that's, uh, that's going on. And then so those are some of the differences that like separate us from say like CSR, right? Where they don't have that. And then so you try to intersplice like your cool features with some imagery and try to do that in 15 seconds. I mean, it took us like two months to do a, a nice video. Just but again, luckily, we have it in-house. <laughs> <laughs> just, just going back to your core question, I mean, it, it, or your first question, it has become the core UA strategy for a lot of our advertisers. Um, and it is the fastest growing part of our business. Um, and we feel there's a reason for that, right? The consumer is getting an opportunity to um, qualify themselves as, as a potential user that's going to convert because they've had a chance to see a part of that experience. And uh, for developers uh, like C that have a chance to thoughtfully think about how do they communicate uh, differentiation or you know a really great experience in this 15 or 30 second video spot, uh, then it ends up being that much more effective. Uh, certainly helps if, if you're a studio uh, <laughs> by, by legacy or by you know, your heritage. Uh, but even if you're not, uh, certainly uh, Flurry uh, in our business, we, we regularly help people produce these videos. We have a creative team in-house uh, that helps them do a, a great job in producing a really compelling ad experience. Um, one of the things we haven't really touched on yet is the way video operates across different devices. Obviously, the way it looks on an iPhone screen seems tiny in comparison to even I have a Samsung. Um, how does mobile video differ across different mobile devices and then it breaking into the tablet space and other places where applications are operating? And do you guys uh, have any advice for developers moving into that space? Um, for us, um, we do a lot better on iPhones, uh, on the phones than tablets. Um, don't know why, we're trying to figure that out. Whether it's like an ergonomic thing or whatever, I mean, it's a lot of man hours trying to figure that out. So um, I'll let you know when we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds good. 
I mean, in terms of serving video ads, at the end of the day, I don't think there's a ton of difference that isn't just bound up in the nature of the OS and the users themselves. I mean, you know, the thing is, is you know, for you who maybe has multiple devices, like the iPhone may look tiny versus the Samsung, but at the end, you know, someone who's got an iPhone and that's what they use, it just looks normal. It looks like what they're used to. I mean, you've got to spend the time to make sure that it works well on all the devices, it renders well on all the devices, you know, the... The, the actions after the video work on all the devices. I think traditionally iPhone users tend to monetize a little better than, uh, than uh, Android users. But really, I mean, I don't think that there's a fundamental big difference between video on Android versus video on iOS, frankly. I think yeah. they work equally well in both places. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're, we're taking advantage of the whole screen. Um, so I think most of us have gotten... Uh, you guys hear us? Sorry. We're, we're taking advantage of the whole screen, so we've you know created a really consistent way to drive a great experience on all different types of devices and all different types of OS. Um, you know, certainly the post uh, view screen is where you might see um, you know certainly some variation, but you know I think a lot of us have got a lot of experience working with all these different device types and have created a really great uh, post view experience. So uh, the the you know. Uh, variations and all these devices don't really have a big impact. I think the one thing I'd just add is that the, the fun thing for you guys and for us too is the big screen on the wall, no one's really looking at <laughs> right? They're looking at the, the kind of HD retina device right in front of them, right? Be that tablet, be that phone, be that combination of the two. I think that's where we see kind of um, the numbers shift and especially a different age demographics as well, right? Um, you know, if you've seen you know, most folks, <laughs> um, you know, younger than us here on the panel, I think, uh, you know, they're going to a, a, a different device first to watch any type of video content now, right? And they're not going to, the, they're going to the TV last, potentially, right, if at all. So I think that's huge opportunity for all the app developers in the room and folks like us to work out better ways to, you know, help you guys both on the user acquisition as well as the kind of brand advertising side. So in the spirit of competition, when you are allowing for these, you're trying to monetize through, through in-app advertising with video, and suddenly there are other apps advertising within your apps. How do you work with these other developers? How do you think about, you know, are they going to start stealing my users and take them away? And then on the flip side, what apps should I be advertising in? Um, how does that play out when you're a developer? I think for, for us, we launched, um, you know, our, our mobile ad network in 2010 and early goings, there were um, a lot of companies nervous about their users being exposed to competitors' app experiences that, that you know, might cannibalize, uh, you know, their particular app. Um, I'd say that that degree of nervousness over the last, you know, several years uh, has pretty much gone away. I mean, we've, we've found that uh, most folks, unless it's an app that's directly competitive uh, with you know the, the publishing app. You don't see them being really nervous about it. Generally speaking, pretty you know, people are pretty open. However, in those instances where they need to be assured that they're not going to have a competitor's app show up in their app, uh, we have blacklisting available for them to just let us know that hey, please don't show these types of apps in this experience. But uh, over the years, it's it's become much much less of a concern. Yeah, we do the same. The category targeting, like if you don't want certain types of advertising to show up in your app, you could against that I think you know some of the reality of that is you you are going to be in that competition for kind of you know a time spent right you're really looking at a person who's using their phone on you know a set number of apps very regularly and you're, you're going to be competing with other folks to drive them into your experience versus others yeah so you, I, I would be very careful about the types of advertising I run I would consider things everything that affects the user experience not only categories of competitors but also frequency capping and controls and some of the earlier points we made to protect that user experience yeah I mean we only have maybe like three games that we blacklist because we feel that that's a direct competition but outside of that I mean what do we care if somebody wants to play Clash right <laughs> I play Clash yeah. you know I love yes. it <laughs> so I'd really like to open it up uh, to the audience here does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask our expert panel <laughs> Nobody else will, I <laughs> <laughs> what about if you're the person that can generate the audience you have an existing audience and um, you have an app that you're going to be using, and you want to monetize or you know gamify, uh, you know this audience that you have. So I have the market, 
-hmm. and I have places to advertise and stuff like that. Can you guys help me bring advertisers to my app that are going to be specific to the audience that we're looking for, small business, you know, Chamber of Commerce, those type of things? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's for, you know, speaking for the three ad networks, and you guys can obviously add to this, but that's what we do. That's, that's why we exist, right? Um, and the key thing for any of you guys as app developers, if you create a, a valuable audience um, with a great experience that advertisers don't mind being associated with, trust me, ad dollars will find you. Right. On the same side of that coin, if I have like conventions or expos that are trying to hit me up with passcodes and stuff like that, can you help me manage that stuff as well? Oh, you mean take the advertisers from you? Um, yeah, I, I did get hit up for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Job pairs, you know. Uh, I, I think I'm ask, perfectly right? happy to yeah. take them. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. In the office, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Roof, yeah. 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 No, we're, we're happy to work yeah. with, with folks. And, and you know, to, to your point about thinking about specific audiences. But you get the point, though. I yeah. want to try to make money off of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just don't want to give that information away. I want to monetize it. Yeah, no, and we want to help you monetize it. Uh, so I, I think one of the things that makes us certainly unique is the, the data that Flurry captures through its analytic, analytic service. Uh, we leverage that data set, which is certainly the largest in the mobile app ecosystem, to try and help advertisers uh, target advertising to reach the audience and engage with the spe specific audience that uh, that they feel is appropriate for their content, for their app, uh, for their brand. So we segment audiences with that data, and we allow uh, you know folks that you're probably getting approached uh, by to try and target uh, types of users that they want. So um, for us, it's all about working with advertisers to help them find an audience, and it's all about trying to optimize. Uh, you know, the yield for publishers by using that data. So certainly we're happy to work with you. So if I make that introduction, <laughs> anybody else they do business with? Well, yeah, yeah. Let, let's have a chat first uh, <laughs> together and we'll figure out what the best strategy is. So if I can add one thing, I think from the OpenX side, I think one thing we've seen is that flexibility on the ad formats. You mentioned a few maybe more custom things for your industry that you might want to support for direct advertisers. So that's something that, you know, on the ad server side that we support very heavily and we, we work with a ton of folks in the industry to help them manage specifically unique types of advertising and then kind of bring that up to a programmatic <laughs> level we can have a lot of people kind of bidding and buying against that and make that standardized. The so. thing is to find a happy medium, not too much and not too much. <laughs> do you have a question? Uh, yeah, a question for Austin. Um, yeah. Do you generally always just get work, uh, paid on the CPM basis? Have you ran campaigns that work off of you know cost per download or cost per verified view or lead gen? It, it, it's always like a revenue share of CPM, right? Uh, I mean, it's, it's yeah. Well, it's, it's a revenue share off of revenue, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Are you talking about as an advertiser or as a publisher? Well, I guess as, as a publisher, you know, you can go and use an ad exchange and get paid on a CPM. You can sell direct to brands, and brands might say, "Hey, we'll pay you on a cost per download." You know, or it might be a CPV where they want verified views, so you have some verification question, or you know, some along those lines. So. I didn't know if you, because that ad exchange is going to be CPM. Yeah. Yeah. For, but uh, for you, I didn't know if you've ever tried anything else. We don't have ad exchange. I mean, um, for our mobile games, we only go through these guys. So um, it's just usually CPM. But then when on our Facebook title, we've done a lot of deep integrations where it's by view, it's by like like campaigns we've done in the past too. Um, yeah, so well, we, we've done it all. Um, so, um, but in the, I think for mobile, it's generally just off of CPM. And at the end of the day, no matter what it is, it's all going to roll up to an yeah, effective CPM. Right, exactly. And that's how you figure out if it's working for, for you is, mm -hmm. is that. Because, I mean, we, we all probably support many multiple forms of pay, you know, revenue generation on, on the ad units. Key thing is matching supply and demand, right? Finding if, it, if it's cost per download, finding these zones and the apps where it performs really well so that the publisher gets paid. And that's good because that's a virtuous cycle because those are the zones where the advertising is most effective. I'd say for us, it, it's a spectrum, right? So we've got a, a direct sales force that's out there talking with brands, selling CPM, video advertising, uh, talking to game developers, selling cost per completed view that can translate into some kind of app install. Uh, we also have an exchange <coughs> now where, you know, a marketplace where DSPs are bidding into uh, inventory that uh, is video. So, uh, and that is, of course, on a CPM basis that, uh, that you get a rep share on. So, we run the gamut. Uh, the, the key is, I think, you know, uh, to that last point, is that it's about matching supply and demand. And for us, we feel like we have a lot of different 
uh, ways to go about that from our own sales force all the way through to the marketplace. Um, that marketplace is also going to allow you to represent your audience uh, to folks that are really interested in business professionals uh, and allow you to make that, that audience available to DSPs that have ad demand that's very focused on, on your folks. So having all of those options to make it available to publishers we feel is a really, really high impact solution. Okay, one more back there. What do you all think about uh, forcing the player to watch the entire video versus letting them quit the video halfway through? What are the pros and cons? So the question was, uh, what do you guys think about forcing the video, or forcing the user to watch the entire video, or allowing the user to exit out of a video? Maybe? Well, I, I mean, the pro is we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a big pro, um, <laughs> real big pro. Um, but the thing is, I mean, uh, to us, it, it's okay if you don't want to complete the video. I mean, we're an opt-in uh, kind of uh, service, so we, we don't have a problem with you not watching the video. But I mean, if you don't complete the video, if you don't let the users complete the video, you don't get paid. So that's like a big, big con. I mean, our basic stance is we, we put the control in the hands of the publisher. It's their audience, it's their users. And our feeling is, is you know, to his point, like it, with if you got cost per verified view, you're not gonna get paid unless someone completes the video. But it's a, up to a publisher. If they, if they want uh, to allow the user to skip out and maybe forego that revenue, it's their user experience. It's not up to us to dictate. Same, same here. We offer the, the tools so you can control it. You can mod it. You know, you you can set um, that ad product. We think of them as ad products that we're giving you the tools to create, right? And they you and we have to give you the ability to scale those and diversify those however you want. Yeah, very consistent answer here. It's it's about giving you the flexibility to do what you feel is right for your business and for your app experience. Uh, no question, some are going to drive you know higher efficiency and driving revenue for you, um, but. To me, it's about making sure you have a great user experience uh, first, and then helping you figure out how to optimize yield with that. Um, I will say that you know, for developers that thoughtfully you know think about having to integrate that ad experience into their app or content experience, um, for some of them it's it's not that big of an issue for the the consumer not you know not to be able to opt out of it because it's become a part of the experience that's actually really rewarding and engaging. So um, I think it is really kind of individual to the to the developer and, and their user base. Yeah, where we put our video, we have a completion rate of like 98, 99%. I mean, we just can't find enough fill right now, which is a good problem, I suppose. <laughs> One more question over here. Um, just relating to that question, are you guys coming up with new ways to kind of more accurately measure retention? So like if you're on either Pandora or Spotify, if you turn the sound off, they'll mm -hmm. stop the ad, so they'll make you, uh, you have to listen to the ads in order to continue um, your experience, or on Hulu, you can decide to choose um, a different ad to watch if you don't like the current ad you're playing. Are there different ways, or, or new ways um, coming up, just kind of measuring that retention or bringing more retention to yeah, I mean, I think on the native side with video, we track, there's a whole bunch of kind of additional actions, right? There can be kind of likes, you know, heart shares, comments, like there's, there's a whole kind of social sphere of additional actions, and, and we provide some tools that you can obviously set those up and track those. And one of the campaigns we did recently, we got over 30,000 kind of additional social actions related um, to a piece of video advertising that was put in a stream or a feed, and it was amazing for us to see that initial reaction and how much additional value was created for that brand um, that, you know, we were able to capture by doing that. Um, also, you know, that's kind of really tip of the iceberg if you look at some of the more social apps and where they're thinking of doing kind of really deep, what I would call deeply native, like using things like backgrounds that, um, you know, promoting different kind of industries on top of actual user-created content and promoting user-created content, which may be video as well, and pushing that forward and tracking all the actions related to that. So I think it's a great question. I think you'll see a lot more different ways of evaluating. Um, and I, I, I would say we also haven't still got the kind of, all the tracking we need for the post view, right? So if you created all that social buzz around a particular spot that may be for a brand, Right? There's a lot of also kind of secondary actions of kind of conversations about it, secondary views because of the nature of the devices that you may not be able to capture. Right? So if, I, if I'm on my tablet and I view the spot and I share it and my friends view it and they comment and they like it and then I visit the site and then I maybe have an experience there and 
you know, there's a, there's a whole kind of spectrum of deeper actions, and you know, I think folks like us are, are really interested in, in in kind of tracking those and giving and making sure that value is visible. And and I think to your point earlier, in future, you you want to be able to kind of do buying and buy your audience based on some of those more defined metrics. We call it at OpenX, we call it programmatic sophistication, um, and it's a shift in the industry where you used to kind of do more CPM based buys, and we let you back out everything today, <laughs> right? But I think in in the future you're going to want to know, hey, I, I want to buy something that's going to be you know, shared, and I, I, you may have to do some testing in order to get that data, but we'll, we'll, help, um, kind of, we'll help different advertisers really extend that flow and track all those actions a, a lot more than we do today. One thing I would add to that, I think it's, uh, it's really just the first inning when it comes to mobile video. I mean, it's like maybe a year that money's been flowing into mobile video. And so I think we're really just beginning to see the beginnings of, of, of the formats that are going to get created, the actions that are going to get tracked. Um, there's a ton of innovation that's going to grow out of this. The good news is, is that because advertisers seem to uh, like mobile video, users seem to like mobile video, publishers seem to like mobile video, that's driving spend. And spend is what allows us to innovate. And so I think... Um, a lot of the measurement stuff is beginning to follow that spend. The third-party measurement stuff is beginning to follow that spend. And, and really, if you look just in the last like maybe 18 months, there's been a lot of innovation in terms of video ad units and the way video works in publishers. That's going to continue. So I think like if we have this panel four years from now, we'll be looking back at this somewhat nostalgically at these kind of like early video units. So I think there's a lot more to be written in this story, a lot more. Oh, great. I, I know everybody has more questions, but I'm going to let us break now. Uh, if you want to come up and talk to the panelists, any of us, uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for coming. Grab some pizza, grab a beer, and thank you to Flurry. Visit Deb's Builder to access app strategy resources and find an event near you.